Hello all, this is the step-by-step -step setup of IBM DB2 11.5.7 HADR Pacemaker and this particular tutorial is recorded on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.5. The question that you will ask yourself is why should we even bother to learn Pacemaker? The answer to that is the Pacemaker is future for DB2 cluster technology. The current cluster technology which is TSA is supposed to go away. IBM is going to replace pure scale TSA with pure scale cluster pacemaker. Pacemaker will be single cluster technology for the DB2. Pacemaker will run on AIX, Linux. Pacemaker will support HADR, pure scale and DPF. And hence, I suggest that learn the pacemaker today because the only cluster technology which is going to be there on DB2, AIX or Linux will be the pacemaker. So, First, we will see or understand what are the steps involved in setting up the cluster. So we need two host, one for the primary database and one for the standby database. We need third host for the quorum or QNET device. We need to have one public IP per node. We need to set up the passwordless SSH between instance owner and root. We need to install DB2 on first two nodes along with the pacemaker software. We need to install the corrosing QNET uh, RPM on the third node. We need to create instance on first two nodes. We need to create database on first node. We need to set up the HADR database or we need to set up the HADR. Then we need to create the pacemaker cluster between first two nodes. Then we need to set up the quorum device using the third node. And then finally, we need to perform the testing. So these are the steps that we need to do and accept for installing of the operating system, Red Hat Enterprise operating system, the rest of the things such as installing DB2, creating instance, creating database, setting the HDR, everything will be covered in this particular video. My environment is Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.5, DB2 11.5.7 Community Edition. The two hosts which will be part, part of my cluster is DB1 and DB2. The third host will be the QNET or quorum device. The instance name for me or the one I will be creating is DBP. The database name that I'll use is HADB and the virtual, virtual box on which this particular lab is done is 6.1.30. As I already mentioned, I need three hosts, DB1, DB2 and DB3 and these are Linux 8.5 host. The instance owner is DBP. Make sure that the same user exists on both the nodes. In my case, the user is DBP. Networking set up in such a way that you have one public IP per node. I will review the etc host file, how it looks like, and I will also show you the IF config, the IP of my host. The each and every host should be able to communicate. So I mentioned DB1 should be able to communicate to DB2 and DB3. And similarly, DB2 should be able to communicate with each other. Basically, all the machines should be able to communicate with each other. The passwordless SSH between instance owner and root, very important. You need to be able to do the passwordless SSH between instance owner and root. That's very important. Once we have seen the overview of how the environment looks like, we are going to move to install DB2. I have mentioned here that I'll be using DB2 11.5.7 Community Edition. I will untar the software. Then we will verify the prerequisite for Pacemaker. We are going to install the Pacemaker using DB2 install PCA MK I. And I'm going to install the DB2 using DB2 install Server Edition and in this particular location. And when I, I will be using a flag called no TSA MP, the reason is this is the pacemaker cluster. I do not see a need to install the TSA MP. However, it's fine if you do not use this particular flag. Both the pacemaker and TSA MP cluster uh, software will be installed. That's fine. We can use whichever cluster software we need. One thing that I want to highlight here is I have mentioned the install pacemaker soft is optional. And the reason of that is by default, if you have by default, the DB2 install is going to install the pacemaker software for us. So we do not have to manually first install the pacemaker. DB2 install is going to do that for us. So the, hence, the, this particular step is optional. If you install the pacemaker and install the DB2, that's fine. If you do not install the pacemaker and install DB2, that's also fine. So I made a note here, starting with DB2 11.5.6, 
pacemaker is installed by default. You can, I chose to install the DB2 using DB2 install. You can choose to install the DB2 using DB2 setup. The choice is yours. The, try to make sure that installation path for DB2 binary is same on all the hosts. We will verify that installation is completed using the DB2 LICM-L and DB2 LS. Once the DB2 is installed, we are ready to create the instance. To create the instance, I'll be running the famous DB2 I create command. I'm using the same user as the fenced user and the instance owner. So I'll not use the different account for this. I'll be setting the path variable in such a way that this particular path variable contains the db2cm utility. The db2cm utility will be used to create the cluster and ve verify the cluster. So this particular command is present in instance home directory SQL lib bin. So what I'm doing is like I'm exporting that particular location to the root bash RC path variable. If I do that, then I can run the db2cm command from anywhere. So this is the shortcut that I'm doing. The, the next part that we are doing is pacemaker needs db2 fault monitor to be disabled. So we'll verify if the fault monitor is running. If it is running using the db2 fmcu minus d, we will disable it. So these are, there are three steps that we are going to do as part of the create instance. We are going to create the instance using db2 i create. I'm setting the path variable and I'm disabling the db2 fault monitor. Remember that this commands has to be done as root. The, this everything has to be done as root. The next part after creating the instance, we are going to set up the HADR. To set up the HADR, these are the parameters that I have used. The most important parameter is HADR peer window. Make sure that it is minimum 120. If you see my HADR parameters, they are very, very simple. Well, all that I have done is between the primary and standby, the only thing that differs is the these particular parameters. The local host on node 1 becomes the remote host on node 2. The remote host on node 1 becomes the local host on node 2. Apart from these two parameters, rest of the parameters are kept exactly same. So apart from these two parameters, we will have all the parameters exactly same. So these are the only two parameters that I'm flipping and you will see. So this is the script that I'm running. I'm creating the log archive directory on both the nodes. I am creating the backup directory on both the nodes. So if you see make directory, make directory on both the nodes. I am setting the db2, uh, I'm setting the dbm config parameter to default db path to this particular location. I'm setting the service name uh, the to port to 50k, I'm setting the communication variable protocol to TCP IP. This I'm doing on node 1, I'm doing the same thing on node 2. So these are the, so we are, I'm creating the directories, then I am setting up the default paths, default path, service name and communication protocol. I'm doing it on both the nodes. Once that is done, I'm creating the database using create database HADB command. Once the database is created, I'm converting the database to archival logging by setting the log arcmath1. These are the recommended parameters for the HADR. So I'm setting them to log index build to on index rack to restart. Then I'm setting the HADR parameters exactly as per the table. So these parameters are being set exactly as per the tables. Once these particular parameters are set, I'm going to take the backup. I'm going to transfer the backup to the second node. Then I'm going to restore the backup that we received from the first node. I'm going to flip these two parameters I'm going to flip these two parameters. These are the only things that we are going to change on the standby node. I'm going to start my database as standby on the standby. I'm going to start my database as primary on the primary side. And using the minus HADR option of db2pd, we are going to verify whether the HADR is up and running. This command should be run as the instance owners because the database creation, the update DVM config, everything has to be done by instance owner. So this is the script that I will be running. And if this particular script works, then our HADR environment is ready. So we have created the instance, we have created the database and we have created the HADR environment. Now we are ready to create our cluster. To, so to create the cluster, we will run the db2cm commands and there are exactly five commands that needs to be run to set up the pacemaker cluster. The, the db2cm utility is present in at home location of the instance owner SQL lib bin. We made a small modification to the root bash RC. We added this particular path, uh, this particular location to the path variable of the root bash RC and we will be running below commands as root. So the db2cm commands has to be run as root and 
we need exactly five commands to create our cluster. To create our cluster, we will be saying db2cm minus create cluster. So the first command is create cluster. The name of the domain, the two hosts, which are going to be the part of the cluster and the public interface uh, name, the public interface name of the ethernet for the first host and public interface name for the second host. This particular command is going to create the cluster. Then we are going to create the instance resource model using the create instance the, for the node one. Then we are going to create the instance resource model for the node two for the instance. Then we are going to add the database resource into the cluster using the create DB. And then we are going to create the VIP. So if you see the commands are create cluster, create instance, create instance, create database and create the VIP. These are the five commands that we need to run to create our cluster. Once the cluster is set up, we can verify our cluster using either CRM status, CRM config show or db2cm minus list. Whichever command you are comfortable with, you can use that particular command. Once the cluster is set up, now we are ready to configure our quorum device. To set up the quorum device, what we need to do is we need to install a package called Corusing QNetD. This particular package is present in the pacemaker library. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a shortcut instead of figuring out which RPMs to install. I'm go directly going to install the pacemaker binary, the entire pacemaker uh, software suit. I'm going to untap the DB2. I will not install DB2. I will just install the pacemaker. You can choose whatever way is comfortable to you. You can choose to install this particular package or you can use the DB2 install pacemaker software on the third node everything of all the options are perfectly valid so once the software is installed we can from either of the node first node or second node the nodes which are part of the cluster we will say db2cm create q device and we will give the name of the host where we are going to create the quorum so and then we can verify either from the first node or second node using this command or from the quorum device using this command once the cluster is up and running and quorum is set we are going to do some kind of testing such as the testing of ha testing of whip and we are going to test the remote connectivity i will not explain this particular part now i will explain what testing we are going to do when we reach to this particular part so now that we have seen the all the steps that are required to set up our cluster let me log in to my environment and show you how my environment looks like so these are the three machines there are the three machines I have connected to all three machines. This is node one. Uh, let me do the clear on all the nodes. So I've done the clear on first node. So that's done. That's done. And that's done. All three machines are running Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So this, okay. This is node one. If I do host name CTL. This is db1.db.com running Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.5. If I run the same command on second node or third node, this is db3.db.com running 8.5. And if I run the same command on the second node, then this is db2.db.com and Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.5. This I will not show you much about the quorum device for now. Let me close this and I will just show you these two machines. So now that we have seen these two machines, the next part that I wanted to show you is the IP config. The, the, the cat etc host shows that there is only one IP per node. If I do the same thing, there is only one IP per node on the, both the boxes. And if I do the IF config grep inet, if I do IF config grep inet, you should be able to see that I have got only one IP per node here, and there is only one IP per node here. So there is only one public IP. I'm not using the concept of public IP and private IP. The communication is fine. I have tested it. The first machine is able to communicate to the second machine. So I did a SSH actually. I was not supposed to do SSH. That's fine. What I was supposed to do is I was supposed to ping to node 2. That's working fine. And from node 2, I was supposed to ping to DB1 and that's working fine. So basically both the machines are able to communicate to each other. So that is the connectivity that is also important. They are also able to communicate to the third machine. That also I have tested and I'm not going to show it to you. However, I would like to show it to you. I changed my mind, so I'm showing it to you. So you can see that the, all, the, all the machines are able to communicate to each other. So that networking is fine. Now that we have seen the machines, 
everything is working. The SSH is working. That's I've already tested it. It's all set up. So now the next part is installing DB2. So I'm going to untar the software on both the nodes. So let me do that on first node. So I'm going to do that. So that's done. I've started untaring the DB2 software version 11.5.7 on first node that's initiated. I'm going to do the same thing on second node. So what I mentioned is the pacemaker is optional. So on one node, I will install the pacemaker manually, then install DB2 on another node. I'm going to skip this step. I'm going to skip the install and I'm going to install the DB2 and the end result will be exactly same. So let's verify that the prerequisites are met so that untar is completed. Prerequisites are met. So let's verify that. And we got the result on first node. All the prerequisites for the install pacemaker installation are met. That's good. On the second node, also we got the same result. So that's good. The prerequisites are all met. Now on one node, I'm going to install the pacemaker manually. So I'm going to do that. So let me clear this. Let me install the pacemaker manually. So th that's done. I have initiated the pacemaker. It says installing pacemaker. And on the second node, let me straight away install DB2 without actually installing the pacemaker software. So I'm doing that on the second node. So I'm going to hit enter and accept license. Yes, definitely. And it has started installation of the DB2. So that's good. And here the pacemaker is installed. So that is good. Now I'm going to install the DB2 on the first node. After installing the pacemaker here, I'm installing the DB2 here. And on this node, I have installed the DB2 directly. So let's wait, accept the license. That's correct. I've accepted the license. And now the DB2 installation will start here. The DB2 installation has already started on the node too. So the DB2 is getting installed on both the nodes. That's going to take some time. Let me pause the video and come back once the DB2 is installed on both the nodes. As you can see, the DB2 is installed on both the nodes. That's good. The execution completed successfully. Execution completed successfully. So, so that's all good. So let me clear the screen. Now that the DB2 is installed, let me run the commands just to verify that everything looks good. So let me run DB2 LICML on the first node. It says DB2 community edition, community edition 11.5. That's good. And if I run the same command, it says DB2 community edition. That is a ED ish edition. It gets split, but ignore that. And it's 11.5. So that's good. If I run the DB2 LS command on first node, you can see that it is 11.5.7. And if I run DB2 LS here, then you can see that it is 11.5.7. So that's all good. Now that we have installed DB2 on both the nodes, the next part is the creation of the instance. So we have verified our installation. So let's create our instance using the DB2 I create because the first node and the second node will be hosting the database, the primary database and the standby database. The DB2 instance has to be running on both the nodes. And hence, we need to make sure that the DB2 instance is created on the first and second host. The third host is the quorum device that doesn't need a DB2 installation. Neither it needs instance or the database. So I'm not going to install DB2 software at all on the third node. Only the first node, which will be the primary and the second node, which will be the standby, will have the DB2 instance. So as you can see, the instance got created here. The instance got created here. So that's a good news. So we got our instance. The next part is I'm going to set this particular environmental variable as I mentioned on the first node. So that's done. I'm going to do the same thing on second node. So that's done. The I have already mentioned that we need to disable the fault monitor. So let's see the fault monitor is right now running and you can see the fault monitor is running. So let me disable it. So let me clear the screen and let me run the same command once again. So fault monitor is running, fault monitor is running and let me disable the fault monitor on the first node that's done and let me verify and you can see that this is the grep, this is not actual fault monitor, the process, the fault monitor process, the bin process that's gone and here if I do the same thing, I'm going to disable it and once I disable, if I run the PS-EF grep DB2 FMCD, you can see the fault monitor is gone. So that's done from both the machines as well. So we have disabled the fault monitor. So that is also good news. The next part is 
once so as part of instance creation we did three things we created the instance we set this environmental variable and we have disabled the fault monitor now that i have changed the bash rc i need to log in to the root once again so let me do that so it will take the the db2cm command and now if i run the db2cm minus list command you should be able to see that there is no cluster on the first node as well as there is no cluster because we have not at created the cluster but we can i can run the db2cm command from anywhere without going to that particular bin location because i have set that environmental variable so that's in the bash rc so that's good so and now we are ready to set up our hdr i have already explained the script that i'm running so here again i will walk through the script creating the directories on both the nodes one for archive one for the backup so that's here setting the default db path on both the nodes service name on both the nodes db2com to tcp ip on both the nodes starting the instance on both the nodes so that's this particular part so first creating the directories and setting the three db two dbm config and one registry variable so that's all good once that is done we are ready to create our database once the database is created i'm going to set the parameters these are the parameters that i'm setting and first i'm changing the database to archival logging setting the recommended hdr parameters setting the hdr parameters taking the backup transferring the backup restoring the backup flipping the two parameters local host and remote host starting the hdr on second node as standby starting the hdr on the first node as primary using the minus hdr option of db2 pd command verify the hdr state so i'm going to take this particular command i'm going to go as the instance owner i'm going to say vi hadr.sh i'm going to insert that particular script so I've, i'm going to save it so that's all good i'm going to make it executable so that's all good and i'm going to now before running this particular script i will show you that this is 11.5.7 as you can see and let me show you on the second node as well this is 11.5.7 so you can see and what i'll do is before running the command i will show you the output of db2 list db directory and you should be able to see that i the database directory cannot be found which means there is no database on this node and exactly same thing on this node so let me run the hadr.sh the script that we created just now so let me run that particular script and that particular script is going to do all of the work for us is going to create the database is going to create the change the database configuration managers start the instance create the database so right now the database is getting created that's will take some five to ten seconds so the database is getting created right now once the database is created it's going to set the hadr parameters then it's going to take the so first thing it's going to do is convert the database into archival logging then it's going to set the hadr parameters then it's going to take the backup it's going to transfer the backup is going to restore the backup on standby is going to start the hdr as standby is going to start the hdr as primary and then using the db2 pd command is going to verify that hdr pair is up and running so give it a minute for the database to be created so that's done the database got created the 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 backup is also completed the transfer of the backup see here backup successful that's good the backup is also transferred to the second node that's good the restore is currently happening on the second node you can see it's happening on the second node that's good the and you can see the hadr status using the db2pd command you can see the hadr is set the hadr is up and running so let me now run let me do the split screen so let me see if i can do that so it's not okay let's leave it so db2 list db directory on the first node you can see a database or if i run the same command on the second node i should be able to see the database it was empty i can see the database and if i run the db2 pd command hadb then you should be able to see that on the prime on the first node i got the primary so there is a primary here so that's good and if i run the same command on the standby you can see there is a standby here so we got primary and standby created so the hdr pair and it says
primary peer connected. So that's all good. So our HADR is up and running. And I've shown you the script a couple of times. So I'm not going to show it to you again. So once the HADR is done, now we are at this stage where we can successfully create our pacemaker cluster. To create a pacemaker cluster, we need to run exactly five commands using the db2cm. All the commands has to be run as db2cm. The commands are create cluster, create instance, create instance, create db and create vip. Remember that this is not actually creating the instance, it's creating the instance resource model in the cluster and it's creating the HADR database. And instead of manually running these commands, I have done is like I have captured those commands in this particular small script file. This is exactly same script file that I have used. I have shown these are the exact copy paste of those commands. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to take this particular commands and this command has to be run as root. So let me create a new script called vi.cluster.sh. It's mentioned here. So you can see run below commands as root. So I'm, I've created one file called cluster.sh. I'm going to add those commands. So that's done. I'm going to save this particular file. So that's done. I'm going to make this particular file as the executable. So that's done. I'm going to verify using the db2cm minus list that there is no cluster on the first node. There is no cluster on the first node. I'm going to run the same command on the second node and I need to run this command as root. So there is no cluster and I can run the CRM status command as well, which is the another command and it cannot cluster is not available. That's correct because we have not created the cluster and cluster is not available on the second node as well. So let's run the let's run the cluster.sh command, which is running the first command, which is creating the cluster. That's the command that's running. Let me go here. Wait for one hour. Let's me try, try to run the db2cm minus list says there is no cluster on this host. Give it a minute, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's say and let's see the cluster status and you should be able to see a cluster called H8 domain got created. You can see the domain name H8 domain. That's the name that I gave here. You can see that's the name that I gave here. That is the name that I chose to create my cluster. And you can see there are two nodes in the cluster DB1 and DB2. It shows offline. It's going to come online. So give it a minute. The another command that we can use is CRM status. And you can see that it has added the two nodes. It is adding the third instance and that's it's actually going to take some time. So what I'll do is 138 in my watch. I will come back by 141. Maybe in another three minutes, my entire cluster will get created. I do not want you guys to waste your time watching for next three minutes. You can use this particular time to do something useful. So I'm going to pause the video and come back at 141. So as I mentioned, I came back at 141 exactly after three minutes and everything, whatever we try to do that's completed. Let's look at our VIP. Let's look at whether the VIP is working. So let me, this is my local Windows machine. So let me run the ping command and you can see the VIP is created from the cluster. VIP is created, but it's not pinging. So, but from the create cluster point of view, all the commands are successfully completed. So the created cluster created successfully instance resource for node one created instance resource for node two created database resource created and the VIP is also created. However, the, the public, sorry, however, the virtual IP is not pinging and it has started pinging. The reason for that was not pinging because here it was not at started and now it has started and that's pinging. So the question that you will ask me is where this virtual IP is pointing and the answer is pretty simple. Wherever is your primary database, that's where it is pinging. And I can prove it to you from this particular command. The, it says that it is started on node one. So which means that if I take this virtual IP, if I take this virtual IP, open a putty session, enter the virtual IP and try to connect. Let me log in. And if I log in, you will see that I'm getting logged into the node one. You see that I've logged into the node one and answer to that is pretty simple. The reason of that is because my database is primary on node one. So if it was primary on the second node, then it would have been, it would have been pointing to node two. 
So that's the concept of whip. So the whip will flow as per the primary and we are going to test it. So just we are going to test it. So now that we have set up the cluster and you can see everything is green. The another command. So one command that you can see the cluster is CRM status. That's good. Looks good. The interface for the first node, the internet face for the second node, the instance for from the first node, second instance, the database, the two nodes and the VIP. So that's all good. And it's all started and it's all monitoring, getting monitored right now. So now that this is all done, we the next command that we can use to see the cluster is db2cm minus list and it says cluster status and exactly same command two nodes which are online you can see two nodes which are online the domain name which is ha domain this is the instance for the first node the interface for the first node instance on the second node interface for the second node the database resource this is the database resource it shows that it is primary on node 1 you can see it's primary on node 1 is standby on node 2 which is proved here it is primary on node 1 the whip is active on node 1 because when we connected to the whip when we connected using the whip see we connected using the whip we ended up on node 1 because the whip is pointing to node 1 and the reason why whip is pointing to node 1 is because the database is active the primary is active on node 1 so now the and i need you to look at this i need you to look at this this is it says two node quorum this is very important so right now i do not have the qnet device configured it's using the first node and second node to form the quorum that is really not a good practice when you are setting the ha environment you need to make sure that you set up the qnet device so that for that we need a third host so as i mentioned that to set up the q Quorum device, we need to only install this particular package. However, I'm being lazy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to log into the third node. So let me close this. I'm going to log into the third node. So this is DB3. On this particular node, I'm not going to install DB2. However, I'm going to do a shortcut. So let me untar the DB2 software. So that's, I'm doing that. And once the DB2 software is untarred, I will verify the pacemaker prerequisites are met. So instead of installing only one package i'm just installing the entire pacemaker which will ultimately install this particular package so my goal is achieved you can choose whatever you want to do you can if even if you want to install db2 you can install db2 but the question is why you want to install db2 on a quorum device that's not required so that's if you if you are if you do not want to have a third host you can use existing db2 host as a quorum device but you have to make sure that that is device you should not restart that particular machine because the quorum will be lost. So now that we have untarred the software, I'm going to install the pacemaker. So that's getting installed on the third node. So get installing pacemaker. That's I'm doing on third node. Once the pacemaker is installed, now we are going to create our Q quorum device. Let's keep an eye on this. It says two node quorum. So keep a note of this. And I can run this, this command to create the quorum from any node. Before running that command, let me verify if the quorum, what this particular says, and it says, can't connect to Q device, is Q device running? And answer is no, it's not because we have not configured the quorum. That's why it says that it says is Q device running and it's, it's perfectly fine because we have not yet configured the quorum. So now let me run. We can run this particular command from any of the node, the first or second node, not the quorum node. We have to use this from the participating clusters. So we have to run this command from the nodes which are part of the cluster which are either db1 or db2 so i'm going to choose db1 because i want to keep a output this particular output so i'm going to keep this so i'm going to run this particular command and it's right now creating the quorum device for us so as you can see the successfully configured q device on nodes db1 and db2 attempting to start q device on db db3 Quorum device db3 added successfully. Now, if I run this particular command, you, the output that we got can't connect to Q device socket. Now, let's see what this particular output says. So, I'm going to run this and it says there is a quorum device on node 3 and it's connected. So, all good. The quorum is also configured successfully. That's all good. So, now that we have configured the quorum, let me run the same command db2cm minus list. I'm going to take this command. And I'm going to run this particular command from the node one. Let me clear this. 
let me run this and you should be able to see now that in the quorum information instead of saying two node quorum now it says it's a queue device and it points to the quorum it points to the node tree so the db2cm minus list gives the information about the the resources the nodes the database the whip and the quorum device so it's a pretty powerful command that we can use to identify all the resources which are part of the cluster now that we have created the quorum is the time to do our testing the testing and make sure that our cluster is behaving as we want it to behave so there are multiple scenarios that we can test such as killing the primary db2cc process killing the standby db2cc process turning off the primary so many scenarios i'm not going to waste your time i'm going to just test two scenarios so i'm going to do something like this so let me let me sorry um okay, okay. so let me run crm status and you can see the db2 is standby and the db1 is primary so let me run let me go to the instance owner let me run db2 pd minus db hadb minus hadr grep hadr role and you can see the primary or if i say grep hadr rather than this the primary is db1 the standby is db2 it's not shown here but that's the standby and what i'm going to do now is i am going to stop the the process the db2 cc process on the standby and let's see what the pacemaker cluster does for us so let me do that let me connect to the second node once again so i'm so that i can keep the this particular output we do not need the quorum so we do not need this i'm going to disconnect from the quorum device and let me clear the screen and let me log in let i don't have to log in as the instance owner so let me run ps minus ef grep db2 cc that's the process i'm going to kill minus 9 this particular db2 cc process that's done then i'm going to verify the process is gone the db2 cc process is gone now let me so it was all green all everything was green so then let, let me run the crm status command once again and let's see what exactly happened and it has identified that the data the instance on the second node has stopped so what it's going to do is it's going to turn back the standby instance again so now if i log in as the instance owner and if i do db2 pd minus db hadb minus hadr then you can see enable db2 start has been run on the member make sure which means the db2 instance is not running because we have killed it so let's wait for the pacemaker cluster to identify this particular that the node one has gone so it has stopped you can see the instance has also been stopped so then it is going to restart the standby instance and is going to bring up the database and is going to establish the hadr pair automatically that's what is going to happen so let me go here and you can see it says primary peer connected let's see what exactly this says and it says primary it says it's disconnected right now you can see okay and it got connected so did i clear it off yeah so you can see it just disconnected around 1351 it was still disconnected and at 1352 you can see it got primary peer connected and now if i go here if i go here and if i try to run this particular command db2 pd then i should get the output and you can see i got the output the standby came back and if i now run the original process of db2 cc was 119069 if i run the ps minus ef command uh where is that command okay so oh i did that why i'm okay so i think i ran that command as root so that's why i'm not getting it so if i run this particular command the new process came up with one five one four nine four six seven previous was one one nine zero six nine so automatically the pacemaker cluster has started the standby instance and it has also started the database and it brought the database into peer connected so that's good that's good the next part that we are going to do is we are now going to the final testing so now that now that we have seen that so now i'm going to do the testing of the whip so let me see if there are any entries here so 
node directory is empty db directory is empty i'm going to catalog these two nodes uh, the virtual ip the bip the, the bip that we created i'm going to create that node so that's done let me run this let me clear the screen and let me run these two commands so you will be able to see how my node looks like how my database looks like so the node is pointing to 192.168.1.100 and the node name is vip on this particular node name hadb i have cataloged the database hadb on the vip and this vip is pointing to this particular ip address so now what we are going to do is i'll connect to this particular database and let me connect to this particular database and if i show you the output of this then it will show that we are connected to database hadb on node 1 and it's a linux box so this is my windows box and i'm connected to the linux box that's all good so now i'll run this particular query which shows which is our primary which is our standby all of that information so we can capture that information so the i'm connected to the primary so the database i'm connected to the primary and the primary host is db1 so all good and the primary is in the pr connected so the hadr is pr connected so that's all good so now what i'm going to do is i am going to shut down my primary node so let me verify this let me verify this is my primary this is primary peer connected and i am going to shut down my primary so the if i run crm status command you can see everything is started the whip is pointing to node 1 the whip is pointing to the node 1 and my primary is node 1 that's great so now i'm going to do a shutdown of node 1 the current primary i'm going to do the shutdown and let's see what exactly happens with this so i'm going to do that so that's done let me come here let me run the crm status and you can see that everything was green now it says stopped the whip is also stopped the whip is also stopped the this is disconnected because i have shut down this i'm going to keep the screen and then if I run the CRM status once again, you can see the primary, the VIP which was started on DB1, it has started on DB2 and the must, the primary is DB2 now, the primary was DB1. So you can see that. Now if I run, if I connect back, my connection would have gone. If I connect back and if I run the, that, this, this particular command, the standby member host the from the mon get hadr let's run this and you can see primary so i'm connected to primary but this time the primary is db2 from db1 the primary is db2 and is disconnected okay so that's good so the role switchover has happened successfully and i can prove it to you so let me go to the second instance let me run db2 pd minus db hadb minus hadr grep hadr if i run this you can see primary so the db2 which was the standby has become the primary and the database is also primary and it's in the disconnected state. that's good that's good so now the final testing that i'm going to do is i am going to turn on the primary the old primary back and let's see what the pacemaker does for us so let me bring it back so let me turn it on once i turn it on it's going to take some time so let me turn it on and then once it turns it on the cluster so this is was the old primary okay anyway we have seen this this was old primary okay that's fine i'll keep this so what i'll do is i will the the third host okay it's actually went for the boot menu that's not good so let me unmount disk from the first node and try to reboot it again sorry about this i do not like to waste your time so remove this turn back and it should boot again so give it a minute so the the old primary is coming online so that started booting so now i'll show you the output of crm status so let me run connect to the second node clear the screen crm status shows that okay so for some reason it stopped i think it is it has identified that old primary has come back so it has stopped everything however that's not going to be a problem what it's going to do now what it's going to do now is is going to convert 
the old primary back into the new standby. It's going to do that. And that particular integration takes a lot of time. It takes a bit of time. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to pause this video and wait for that integration to happen. And then I will show you that the old primary has become the new standby. So let me pause the video and come back once that is done. So after a while, you can see everything has come online. You can see it has still stays top state, but let's verify. So this, the node one was primary. I did a shutdown of that node. So let me connect to the node one back again. So I'm connecting to the node one. So that's done. I connect it twice. So let me clear the screen. Let me go as the instance owner. Let's verify if the DB2 process has came online. So let's do that. And that seems to have come online. And let me to take a look at the status of the database. So let's figure out what exactly happened to this particular database. So you can see that this particular database here was the old. So this is the node one. This is also node one. So this was, you can see the node one was primary. Now it has become the standby. The node two is the new primary. That's good. And let's run this particular command once again. And I will explain you so that my connection would have gone uh, my connection would have gone bad. Uh, I don't think so. Let's actually, it should have not gone. Okay. So let me, okay. Why did I correct this? Okay. And let me run this. So you can see the, the new, it's now primary peer connected. The DB2 is primary and DB1 is standby. Here, the, okay. So originally DB1 was primary. It was peer connected. Then I did the shutdown of DB1. DB2 become, became the primary, disconnected, disconnected. And now when I brought the DB1 back, then the primary peer connected and DB1 is now the standby and DB2 is primary. So when I did the shutdown of node one, automatically the, the old standby became the new primary and the old primary, when it was brought back online, became the standby. And right now you can see it's standby peer connected and here is primary disconnected. Okay, the screen is there. That's good. And if I run this, then you should be able to see it's primary peer connected. So this disconnected was when the standby was shut down. That's when we had the disconnected. And when it was brought back online, you can see it's primary peer connected. So this is the power of pacemaker cluster. We did. If you want to disable the cluster, you can use the db2cm minus disable all. If you want to enable it, so if you want to manually do something and you want don't want the cluster to play around with your databases, you can say db2cm disable all. You can enable the cluster using db2cm enable all. And if you want to delete the cluster, you will say db2cm delete cluster. So this is this is how you set up the pacemaker cluster. The steps involved were actually. We need two hosts for the primary and standby, third host for QNET. We only need one public IP. We need to make sure there is a passwordless access between instance owner and root. We need to install DB2 on only two nodes along with the pacemaker software. We need to install Corosync QNET D on third node, create instance on two nodes, create database on first node, set up the HADR between these databases, then create the pacemaker cluster and set up the quorum device. So these are the steps that we followed to set up the DB2 11.5.7 HADR pacemaker cluster on Linux 8.5, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.5. I hope this particular tutorial was useful. I hope you like this particular tutorial. I hope the, you like the content that I'm uploading to my YouTube channel and you are finding it informative and useful. I hope after watching my videos you are able to implement these particular solutions in your environment in your in your uh, project or in your if you want to try it out in your personal home you are able to do that thank you for watching and see you in next video and if you like the video and if you like my content please do subscribe to my channel and please like my like this video thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial bye bye